Hello, welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff. The project where I, Jeff, read the book Infinite Jesty one page at a time, one day at a time. Yeah, you know what's up. Uh, page 275, let's knock it out. Here we go. 99 after 15 years of marriage. Then, for several years, a rooming house drunk, which on Gately's view is about one, like one step up from a homeless person type drunk. Bert F. S. got mugged and beaten half to death in Cambridge on Xmas Eve last year, and then left there to, f like, freeze there in an alley in a storm, and ended up losing his hands and feet. Ugh. Dooney Glynn's been observed telling Bert F. S. things like that there's some new guy coming into the disabled room, uh, excuse me, and off Pat's office with Bert F. S., who's without not only his hands but and feet, but arms and legs, and even a head who communicates by farting in Morse code. Not Morse code, Morse code. This Sally earned Glenn three days full house restriction and a week's extra chore for what Jeanette Faltz described in the log as excessive cruelty. There's a vague intestinal moaning in Gately's right side. Watching Bert F. Smith smoke a Benson and Hedges by holding it between his stumps with his elbows, out like a guy with pruning shears is an adventure in fucking pathos as far as Gately's concerned. And Jeffrey Day cracks wise about there but for grace. And forget about what it's like trying to watch Bert F. Smith try and light a match. Gately, who's been on living staff here four months now, believes Charlotte Treat's devotion to Needlepoint is suspect. All those needles, in and out of all that thin, sterile white cotton stretched drum tight in its round frame. The needle makes a kind of thud and squeak when it goes through the cloth. It's not so much like the soundless pop and slide of a real cook and shoot, but still, she takes such great care. Gately wonders what color he'd been call he'd call the ceiling if forced to call it a color. It's not white, it's not gray. The brown-yellow tones are from high-tar gaspers. A pall hangs up near the ceiling, even in this early in the new sober day. Some of the drunks and trank jockeys stay up most of the night, joggling their feet and chain-smoking, even though there's no cartridges or music allowed after zero hundred hours. He has that odd house staffer's knack, Gately. Already, after four months of seeing everything in both living and dining rooms without really looking... Emil Minty, a hardcore smack addict punk, here for reasons nobody can quite yet pin down, is an odd is in an odd mustard-colored easy chair, with his combat boots up on one side of the standing ashtrays, which is tilting not quite enough for Gately to tell him to watch out, please. Minty's orange mohawk and the shaved skull around it are starting to grow out brown, which is just not a pleasant sight in the morning at all. The other ashtray on the floor by his chair is full of ragged little new moons of bitten nails, which has got to mean that Hester T, that the Hester T that he'd ordered to bed at 2.30 was right back down there in the chair going at her nails again the second Gately left to mop the shit at the shelter. When he's up all night, Gately's stomach gets all tight and acidy from either all the coffee or maybe just staying up. Minty's been on the street since he was like 16. Gately can tell. He's got that sooty complexion homeless guys get when there's, where the soot has insinuated itself under into the dermal layer and thickened, making Minty... Page turn. That means we came to the edge of page 274. So that means today's installment of Infinite Jeff has come to a close. Weep. Weep for Infinite Jeff. Only shed one or two tears because it's coming back tomorrow or as soon as you click the next link. So, ah, my shoes hurt. Have a good night.